I really appreciate this opportunity to be here. I'm somewhat uh, uh, taken aback sometimes by an introduction from an august member of our community like that and uh, just want to admit that I have professional attention deficit syndrome. This, being an entrepreneur has, has been for me a wonderful wide uh, and raging ride in the experimentation in markets. Um, and I wanna just share some ideas today with you. Um, you know, my, my, I'm gonna share some wisdom from my grandpa. I'm gonna share some ideas that we use in business and I wanna talk a little bit today about how some of this can be imported into government. And it's very important to me uh, that, that we think in terms of results in business. You know, the one key metric in business is profit. It's pretty simple. Uh, and yet in government, there are about 50 key metrics that you're responsible for. And so it's the most complex organization on earth, the government is. And you have to be paying attention to disruptive forces. You have to be paying attention to market forces. And uh, at the same time, trying to get something done in political landscapes that sometimes work against you. Um, so you have all the great challenges. I'm just going to be up here talking about some of the fun things that I've been involved in. You know, we, we've heard a lot about uh, uh, <coughs> I've heard a lot about telling, my grandpa would, would say, you know, in a speech, you want to tell them what you're going to tell them and then tell them what you told them and, and then tell them again, right? All, all the, the three cliches of presentation. But for me today, I want to do something a little different. Um, I want to tell you some things I think you already know. Uh, I want to give you a free gift and I want to challenge you by telling you a little bit of a sad story. Um, and uh, so, that sad story actually started for me last night. I, I uh, lost a dear friend um, who on Sunday was, uh, in, was injured at Pocono Raceway, uh, Justin Wilson. Um, he's a man who uh, lived at 240 miles an hour and he always did uh, the right thing in terms of leadership, acting on his leadership instincts and competing. Um, and he was never afraid. So. Uh, the sad story there is that he passed away. Um, and uh, so I just want to say that those are the things that matter. Um, and when I talk about being brave, I want you to think about how brave he was every day when he got on the track. So I'm an entrepreneur. I'm trying to find patterns in my own life. And I, I recognize that everything I've been involved with from Seabridge to Swiftwick from domestic bicycle manufacturing to data and document management services in the transportation industry. Um, as a matter of fact, I was super inspired this morning by Patrick's comment about the justice system, the criminal justice reform opportunities at the state and federal level. I have another company that we started a few years ago that today has nine jail systems on a television network, a television control systems network, and our mission is to well, gee, if you're incarcerated for the next three years, you might want to watch higher quality television. And so we put the programming opportunities at the fingertips of the warden. Um, and, and so we built out nine jail systems today, and we're super proud of what we're doing. And I had no idea that maybe this morning you guys would be talking about these important issues. And the way that that ties to me, besides the fact that I've invested in it personally, and I'm trying to do something about it personally, is that <clears throat> recidivism affects all of us. Patrick hit on those t topics this morning. 50% uh, of the Tennessee graduates from our prison system will be back in jail within the next three years. Uh, and what Texas has proven through entrepreneurship training programs is that they can cut that recidivism rate beyond just getting a degree, beyond getting an advanced degree, beyond getting a GED, and all the things that help people uh, transition back to productive citizen life. But we can get that recidivism rate down to 7%. So we are working on controlling what goes into their mind through that period and adding resources to that experience and everybody watches television. So I was really pleased to be inspired by that today. And I, I think that um, tying all those things together, uh, I spent 17 years in transportation as a, as a typical career. And uh, every one of these business opportunities that I've been involved in have had at their core uh, the connection was examples of disruptive innovation. So I want to talk a little bit today about disruptive in innovation. And in that theme, my grandfather always taught me, he said, do what you like least first. So
So you always have something exciting to look forward to. And I think most of us live our lives, we wanna go do something that we're good at, we wanna go do something where we can make a difference, but there's something we have to do and we like it the least, and we need to do that first. So sometimes what I'm hearing at your conference is, you gotta go do the heavy lifting, you gotta do it first. You gotta tackle it, get it out of the way. And my, my advice from grandpa, do what you like least first. He also said, learn from the mistakes of others. They're the least expensive kind. And I don't think I need to explain that. He said, and I think this is a part of your political landscape, but it's also very important in business. And the topic today is building innovative companies that have a big impact. Uh, but what I wanted to do is, was transition that also to how do we import that into government work and make that more relevant to you. But he said in the terms of business, if you wanna be successful, you always gotta leave a little something on the table for the next guy. And I think that's true in politics. You gotta, you gotta leave some compromise, you gotta leave some, uh, something on the table for the next guy. Everybody ultimately wins. And then he said, read, Mark. Read like you're going blind. And uh, when that ever happens to you, you'll still have vision. And you, as our legislative leaders, as the entrepreneurs of government and that part of our society, you gotta read, you gotta, boy, the bills that you gotta take and absorb and the things that you gotta create, you gotta read like you're going blind. And uh, so I, I, wanna, I always wanna go back to the basis of values. I think grandfather gave me a, a bunch of wisdom and a bunch of basis upon which I can grow my businesses and I think it, it actually helps with you as well. And then when we take the basic wisdom and we start looking at human operations in business or even in uh, you know, your work and people who are looking for your leadership in government, there is an intersection. There's a point where we understand that everybody out there is concerned. Change, as was described here a moment ago uh, by our last speaker from AT&T, change is constant and change is massive and it's overwhelming and people live in a state of fear about change. People also live in a state of hope about change. And at that intersection, what you find is leadership. In business or in the government, uh, this is where the people you're interacting with and that you're leading are living. It's someplace and this intersection is where you step up as a leader. So again, at that intersection, what you find right now today is disruption. Um, I've become a, 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 a student of disruption. Um, you know, the trend in management thinking today is for leaders and managers to act like entrepreneurs. And uh, there are efforts in big companies to study and then try to mimic the behavior of an entrepreneur. Uh, the disruptive thinking processes and the very rapid decision-making behaviors that otherwise come naturally to a, an entrepreneur. Um, corporate managers, this, these are, these are things that are real for you as well. Corporate managers and big organization leaders, you know, you're often charged to optimize, to protect and extend a particular revenue stream. You're being asked to establish structure while entrepreneurs like myself are corvetting around your marketplaces and we're tuned to attack opportunities where they present themselves in unpredictable circumstances. So both of these behaviors, the professional manager and the entrepreneurial manager, these are carnivorous animals, um, but we have different survival skills and some of these things uh, help us or serve us even in the same landscape. So I would submit today that we can replace, as I said earlier, the word entrepreneur uh, and business leader with uh, creative legislative leaders like yourself. So what makes, what makes us different? The entrepreneur or the legislator must be unafraid of failure, even while we admit that a healthy fear of failure drives us but it can't be allowed to paralyze you. The entrepreneur must be comfortable being alone because the pursuit of wisdom and vision that nobody else has and taking a path less traveled means that the journey can be lonely at times. I'm sure you've felt that way, trying to lead on important issues from your heart. Creativity for the entrepreneur is also a premium, and it's a critical success factor. It might even be the root cause of why we are where we are and how we get out of where we find ourselves. So creativity in your role, creativity in business is critical. And then I think finally, entrepreneurs know how to get the most out of our meager resources. Um, we focus on gathering customers first, 
and customers will finance our success. And I think if you replace the word voter or citizen with customers, you're going to head start. Also at that intersection, you will find that everything operates at the speed of now. Um, earlier in the presentations, you've heard today about the pace of change. And you, we talked specifically about the Internet of Things. And, um, the idea that you need to be ready for absorbing what the social impacts are and the business impacts and the governmental efficiency impacts are of emerging technology is a huge responsibility. And it's difficult, even if you're a professional, uh, to keep up with what it is that's coming. And you find, at that same place, people. So people are looking for a lot of help. Remember, they start out with a little bit of fear and a whole lot of hope, and that's where you find them as a leader. And they need to know where they fit. So building an innovative enterprise, building an innovative business requires that you have a system and a process and a structure for helping people know where they fit, believe that they can make a difference, and show them how they can make a difference. And every, I would submit to you, every single employee in a state government organization Every single person is there reporting every day to work because they want to make a difference. And it's up to us as leaders to make sure they know how, to give them the systems and processes that allow them to be successful. And that includes measurements. And I think that that's one of the things that's changing in government today. It's a revolution at the state level. People are expecting results. Less, well, results more so than rhetoric. So when people ask me, how have I, how have I been successful you know, to the degree that I have been in several different industries. I just uh, would like to give some credit to a good friend of mine, John Bernard from Oregon, who wrote the book, Business at the Speed of Now. And this book is a New York Times bestseller, came out in 2012. I've known John for 15 years, and we have built companies together, uh, and he's helped me implement the employee engagement systems and the communication and metrics systems that are necessary for success in business. And what are those? So those are, uh, quickly, a fundamentals map. You have to fundamentally know who you are, what your mission, vision, values are, and I don't think I'm talking about anything surprising. You have to understand a process exists for change management and change management is what most people are afraid of in one way or another and what they're looking to you to help minimize in terms of the risks and the fear. Everybody wants a scorecard. You get a scorecard every time an election comes up. I get a scorecard every time the profits uh, are published. Um, everybody in every role in your organization needs a scorecard. You need to have quarterly business reviews. And government can do that. There's no reason you can't. Lean business processes in business work in government. You got to have a cascading connection. You have to be able to describe to the people in front of you how what they do rolls up to the governor's objectives and how it rolls down to the voters, the customer at the DMV or the customer who's at DOJ, you know, uh, the DOD, the EIEIO of the things that you guys operate. You have to be able to explain to them how what they do connects. You better have problem solving skills. It's one of the things that people have and don't know, but there's not a common language in most businesses. And you need a common language in government, in, in your party, and within the organizations that you meet with. You gotta have problem solving skills. You need a common language for that. You gotta have a shared vision. So with Swiftwick, our vision was to work, manufacture the world's best sock. The disruptive thing that we did was we made a sock that won't wear out. We took a product that everybody has super low expectations about, pantyhose that you know run the second you put them on and you gotta buy a new pair. That's not, it's just stupid. You could make pantyhose that would never, never, never run. Um, and then I don't have an idea what's happening there. <laughs> Let's see, all right. There we go, disruption. What's your flexibility, Mark? Um, but that, the disruptive idea was let's be environmentally sensitive Let's never use dyes that destroy the environment. Let's make the world's best sock. Let's manufacture exclusively with American domestic manufactured technology. Let's make it in the United States, and let's make sure it never wears out. 
I make the world's best sock. So in six years, we went from zero to number one. As I was introduced, we're the number one selling cycling sock in the country. We're the number one selling American manufactured uh, running sock in the country. And we just signed REI um, to be deployed throughout the REI network, for example. And we did that all with doing business with local entrepreneurs, that running shop, that cycling shop, that locally owned business, because we're a locally owned business and we wanted to make a difference for them and we connected really well. Uh, that's the disruptive idea with Swiftwick. The disruptive idea with Seabridge, let's act like truckers on the high seas. Let's connect Texas in Brownsville with Tampa in Florida. Let's cut 1,300 miles off the transit from the Maquiadora factories in Mexico to the CSX court, you know, head, headquarters and, and railway network in Tampa. Let's do it with a slow tug and barge, a blue water barge system, and let's do it at 60% of the cost of a trucking company's transit. Um, Let's just change the nature. We, we were the first company to implement a nationally recognized marine highway system since 1972. Um, we did it 100% privately funded, and at each end, the ports received millions and millions of dollars worth of um, federal highway fund support and other forms of grants and support to modernize the ports so that they could become container ports. And that was all with a group of uh, aggressive entrepreneurs willing to take risks. And so we had a shared vision in that business. Um, in, in my uh, jail TV business, our vision is to try to catch them at the jail before they wind up in the prison. Let's try to educate them and bring them forward so that the next two and a half years of television they watch will be a productive experience uh, instead of getting better at watching cops and robber shows, Judge Judy and stuff like that. Um, and we're producing and delivering an entrepreneur channel so that like I'd, I'd like to look back on this moment and say Ted Turner once in the, the past said I'm gonna create a 24-hour news channel and that was pretty cool I remember thinking what for um, but today I'd like to be able to look back someday and say we created the entrepreneur channel and we delivered and distributed it to prisons and jail systems nationwide and we helped those people who had the wrong product but they got a great distribution mind and a super great sales mind and they've got a business mind, they just got the wrong product. Uh, let's put them, in the, put them in the position where they could become entrepreneurs and never come back. Um, you gotta have a breakthrough strategic planning process. Um, you were de being described the internet of things. There's three big ideas I wanna touch on today. One of them is the internet of things, so I'll be brief about it, but uh, in the strategic planning process, you ha are dealing with constant change and you have to be able to figure out how does that adjust your strategy. You gotta have that for your uh, constituents. And at the same time, you better have some breakthrough initiatives. You guys call them legislative initiatives. I typically call them how do we cut costs or how do we make money, um, but letting the employees, letting the constituents, letting the team at the table participate in a process that is an initiative and runs through all these connecting dots. You gotta have leadership management development. That's what you're doing right now. Um, and you need more of it. You gotta have executive coaching. And so those are the things in my mind that make an innovative business that has an impact. Those are the same things that in my mind uh, translate into success in your seat. And then finally, risk management. It all comes down to we as professional managers, we as legislators and leaders, our job is to press the risk out of everything that we see and do. So results. In theory, results are profits. Results are positive outcomes. And I'm speaking as a voter. I'm speaking as an entrepreneur. I'm speaking as a cheerleader for you that we need to focus on results. And when you do, the natural outcome is social good, what everybody wants. And so to transition, and back to my friend John, on your tables today, there is a briefing that touches on the work, the results-driven government revolution and initiative that's happening in many states, from Maryland to Oregon to Washington to Michigan to uh, New Mexico, there are some very important initiatives in there and they, they are all based on the uh, transition of this man's work, who is my idol, so I'm giving credit where credit's due. You know, we all have mentors. My mentor and friend is John Bernard. Uh, 
I try to run my businesses at the speed of now, and he's decided that he's going to try to help you through another uh, business uh, process that makes sense, uh, a mapping and a lean business process deployment program, he's trying to help you implement business strategies in government. And so I'm gonna show you briefly then, this is a fundamentals map. I have one of these for my company. You can't see it up here, but there's an example in your briefing. And uh, for the state of Washington, he's put together, and th again, this was my business. I had a, uh, I was a CEO, the governor's the CEO of your state. We have a vision, a mission, a values. We have some foundations upon which we work. We have some core processes that are required that we be good at. There are sub-processes that cascade up. There are process measures that go for each category. And then down here, there's a name of somebody who's responsible for it. So in my business, I literally have taken this all the way down to the outcome measures. Your name is in that box. And you can see where you fit in the various different places, whether it's a selling and marketing and product development process, or whether it's an operational and a support process. Um, <clears throat> That's the state of Washington's primary fundamental functions on one single page. That's the state of Oregon's. Um, and it's pretty impressive when you can actually hand somebody a, a single page and talk about the agencies and the work that's being done. So uh, this was a quote I thought I'd share with you from Rich Baird, who is trying to implement change in Michigan. Um, and so in, the, in summary, what I would say is that uh, you are here today because you can lead by example. You are here today because you act with purpose. And then as a, uh, an homage to my friend Justin Wilson, IndyCar driver, passed away yesterday, be brave. Do it now. And... Uh, live like there's no tomorrow. Thank you.